we did touch on process costing the last the last time that we met, which was last week Thursday. And we also touched job costing. We look at the difference between job costing and process costing. And then uh, over and above that, we we started looking at the overall um, idea behind process costing that no matter the processes, no matter the stages and what's happening between uh, manufacturing a product from the first stage to the last, we morally just trying to get the cost per unit at the end of the day as to how much does it charge, I mean, how much does it cost me to produce this product that I'm doing, whether it's a cake or whether you're making coffee that goes through different processes, all we are doing is trying to get and quantify how much does it cost to produce this coffee, uh, grounded coffee that we are selling or the cake. The complications or rather the addition to the principles, they come in the moment that you you try to see at what point, at, at the certain point in time. So we could say as a work in progress, so far, what are the costs that have incurred thus far for this product? Or during the whole process, you find that there's a normal loss that you would have gone through given the nature of the process that your coffee beans go through. It might be that it's chemicals. Sometimes chemicals, when they're busy, uh, boiling and 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 this type of heat and temperature that you apply on the chemical, certain chemicals might evaporate. So that means that whatever liquid liquid that you're producing would not be at a hundred percent because a part of it might have evaporated given the nature of the process for you to end up getting the petroleum um jelly which is vaseline or whatever i'm just giving an example so i'm saying that those complications they come in but at the end we all saying given all those complications or additions to the people, one needs to understand that all we are doing is trying to get the cost per unit okay so with today's class we'll be looking at the working process, the equivalent units, and the quantity statement. That's a part of today's class. If push, um, if we still have got time, we will look at um, losses if we do have time. Yeah, let's see how it goes. Cool. So, put my laser pointer. Process costing. This is the same flow that we saw last week that shows understanding the use of why do we have process costing, how does it work under a single process, how does it work under consecutive processes, and what is the cost to go into the ledger and how do you report it, right? So we did mention again, I'm just going to repeat so that you remember, that process costing is when certain progress products go through a certain process in order for you to end up getting the final product. Meaning that at the beginning of the process, there will be physical inputs, whether it's material or it's partially completed units that come from a previous process. Then you have to work on those inputs. And that's where the conversion comes to play, where you're using labor and overheads, right? And then comes the later part where it's either you get a fully complete output or it's partially completed. So that's like the chain of process costing. And we did say that the units are identical and normally produced in bulk. That's how you would see that this is the best time for you to use process costing. Okay. We looked at that, we looked at this, yes, um, we looked at, uh, I'm just going to go through this one, we were talking about making cake when it's a single process, we spoke about when it's multiple consecutive 
um, processes. We did the self-assessment. And so now when we get into this part of working process, then there's the part where now the equivalent units, which is what we will look at, which will look at the equivalent units considering raw material, labor overheads, and prior process costs. Then we have to know what is the impact of your valuation method on your inventory, meaning weighted average and first in, first out does come out again, where you need to know how to treat your inventory, meaning how do you uh, value that inventory at the end. Then there's the quantity statement that we need to bear in mind that will show what have you produced, what have you put into the next process. You will see it as we go. Then um, here it's just showing, it's, uh, it's an extension of this quantity statement to say that it's equivalent units, which is that one, where you're showing, as I've mentioned, opening work in process, what's been completed, what is the current production and what is meant to be transferred? Then what is your closing work in progress process? Sorry, and also the losses. So as you can see, your quantity statement actually gives you a guidance as to what has been happening with your units. So what, what comes from the previous process? What is currently being completed within this space? What still needs to be transferred? and what is remaining when it comes to the closing work in process, and what has been lost during this process. So this gives you a clear indication as to what's been happening with your units. It tells you a storyline or a progress report around the quantity of what you're producing. All right? And then the quantity statement also, that's where we will see how do you value all of this inventory that we're talking about. How do you treat it when it's under weighted average and also under first in, first out? Okay, so that's the overall. If someone asks you about process costing, you should be able to explain it so that it's very simple, it's layman's term, but you also understand what is it that you're building and what is the process. Okay. Right, so we have the process costing uh, work in process. So I know that the page numbering uh, that we have here is different from your student uh, module at the moment. But if you can, let's turn to process costing unit and let's look under work in process as to what, what do they say about it. So let me. So with the work in process, we are being told here that uh, a manufacturing process continues over different periods. Okay, for example, when you are manufacturing wine, it stretches over a number of years and the wine ages to perfection inside the barrels. Other pro products, they take a shorter processing time. However, one needs to be aware that at some point or at the end of a specific period, some of the units will not be fully completed, right? And as a result, that's how you will end up getting a work in process because at a certain specific period, your product will not be complete, it's incomplete. So that's where you have the whip. So to calculate the total manufacturing cost for that period, it's a bit usually straightforward, but the, it becomes difficult now when you have these incomplete units at play. Because I did tell you that the main purpose of process cost is to get the cost per unit at the end of the day. So processing of some units may have already been done before the current period. This is where now, when it comes to that coffee, it has been grounded before we start filling it into the final packaging. So the part of the grounding of those coffee beans, or it might be the roasting of those coffee beans, it needs to be um, allocated cost for that process, right? 
So this means that only a portion of that work still needs to be done for either the current period or the future period. Okay, so at the end, what I'm saying is that some units might not be complete at the end of the current period. They still need to be going through further work in the next future or in the next process. So we cannot simply take all the cost of the current period and apply it only to fully completed units to calculate the cost per unit because you end up overstating that cost per unit. Um, then the, uh, so you'll need to then bear in mind that the correct way of doing it is to take into account the partially completed units and you will need to allocate cost to them. So that's what WIP is all about. So we've got to look at an example. If a bottle completely filled with water and another that is filled up halfway with the water, this is the same as a 1.5 bottle of water. This is straightforward, but if you think about the logical cal calculation, for you to get to the costing of this 1.5, what you will need to do is to say one bottle is 100% complete or 100% full. So you will have 100% of the cost for that one bottle. But then there's the 0.5 situation. So 50% is fully filled. It's half fully filled. So now you have... So you would need to then apportion the cost accordingly to these percentages. So number B comes into play just to do another example. I'm going to do another example until we get it right. Is that if an organization spends 1 million and produces 50,000 units in a period, the cost per unit is straightforward. You know, it's a thousand, it's a million over those 50,000 units. So you get 20 rand. If, however, the organization has only completed 40,000 by the end of the current period, but did half the work needed to complete the other 10,000. I would now cost the total amount spent will be less than 1 million. Let's assume there is a 900,000. So the remaining 50% of the 10,000 will be like this. So you will take 1 million minus the 900, right? So you get 100 being incurred in the following period, which will be incurred in the following period. So the production of 10,000 units that are 50% complete are equivalent to 10,000 multiplied by 50%, which is 5,000 units being fully completed. So now how to calculate it, you'll take the 900 that was incurred over the 50,000 that's been completed plus the 5,000. That's how you will get the cost per unit. Are we all together? Do you guys understand the principle behind the whip? Given the example that I just did. Hi, ma'am. Come on, one more time. Hit me again. Hit me again, please. I also don't understand. Maybe all right. So. It's just one more time, please. Okay, please. no problem. I can go through it again. Yeah. Um. Okay, cool. No, so, the first part is very clear. The first example of the word is very clear. Just the, the B one. Okay, cool. Thank you for, for that. So let's take it again. A step back. Let's take take it a step back and let's start. This is when I wish we had a, a board for me to write. But anyway, so what we're saying is that You've got first scenario. This is the first scenario. Don't confuse the scenario. First scenario, we spent 1 million and we produced 50,000 units in July. I'm giving an example. In July, we spent 1 million and we produced 50,000 units. 
So if someone asks you, what is the cost per unit? What does it actually cost us to produce one unit? You will say, all right, in July, we produced 50,000. 50,000 units were complete. So now that means that it's 1,000. I mean, it's 1 million divided by the 50,000. And I'm getting that it's 20 rand per unit. Are we all happy with that one? Because this one is straightforward. It's 100% of the units were completed. So that means that whatever they spent, which is the 1 million, over those units that were 100% completed, we will be able to quantify the cost per unit, which is 20 rand. Happiness with that one is straightforward, right? Yeah. Yes, Problem that one is straightforward. It's straightforward. So now we yes, introduce another element to this whole situation. We say, actually now in August, we're making an example. Say, let's say in August, I'm not going to use July. In August, the organization only completed 50,000. No? And oh, they did half the work. So if they only completed 40,000, that means that there's 10,000 remaining, right? Out of this 50. Yes. Out of this 50,000 units, they only completely fully completed 40,000. No? But they did half the work for the other 10,000. So 40,000, it's 100%. But then this 10,000, they only did half the work for it, meaning the other half they're expecting to complete in September. So you can't just say, ah, I'll still say 1 million over 40,000 because that's what's complete. No, you need to recognize that Half the work was done in August. So as a result of that, obviously, they wouldn't have spent total one million in August. Here they just say, let's assume that obviously there will have to be less than a million that they've spent or, or incurred for August because they only managed to do 40,000 and half the work of 10 million. So you can't just say, that they still spend 1 million. They probably spend less. So they are introducing the 900. So let's make an assumption that the total cost for August is now 900,000 as opposed to 1 million that it could in July. So we're working with 900,000 because less work was done. So how do you quantify this whole situation? You will say that Okay, fine. That means that we've spent 900,000 in August. But what are my units that were completed and partially completed within this period? So you will take the 40,000 and the 5,000, making it 45,000 units being completed and partially completed. Mm. And then my cost unit would be the 900,000 divided by the 45 times 20 rand per unit. Yeah. We what, to, what we're introducing here is to say that, yes, in certain periods, you have a clean slate of saying, I spend 1 million and I managed to produce 50,000 units. It's straightforward. But in other months, you'll find situations where a portion of what you targeted is completed. So there's a 40,000 that's complete, and there's half the work done on what was remaining. You can't just say that I'll see that cost next month. You need to recognize what was partially done in that month and quantify it. Because I did tell you that in every single point in time, we need to be able to say, so far, this is the report that we're giving you, so far, this is what we've spent. We're not saying it's done everything. It does happen. That certain things are beyond your control. It might be that the reason why half the work was done, it was because there was load shedding <coughs> for that month. Always, so it's interrupting your production. 
but does it mean that I won't be able to get a report to say, okay, so far, how, how, how much have we spent? How much, where are we in terms of the completion stage? You will be able to tell me. All right, given the circumstances that we went through, we managed to produce 40,000. Um, and that 10,000 ish hardly, I mean, sadly, we, we only managed to do 50% of the 10,000 that was remaining. All right, so in terms of that, how much was the cost per unit for that period? You have to show the 100% and the 50%. So it's still that 1.5 situation that we introduced here. Are we all together? Together. Does it make sense? Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's still the 1.5 situation. It's just that now we're talking about units showing cost. Okay. Okay, so I'm moving on. Uh, calculation of equivalent units for web. Sorry, let me just take it to this. End. Yeah, yes, everything. Calculation of equivalent units for web. We cannot, for the partially completed, by converting them into comparable. Okay. So I'm going to make another example. So for saying, I'm just trying to just go through this. So let, let's, let's just go through it and then understand what is equivalent units for a work in progress. In order to do this, we need to assume that the cost of 100 units, which are 60% complete, are equivalent to the cost of 60 units, which are 100%. Okay, so let's just go to the example before I read and then I confuse you guys. So they give you an example of saying, if a unit costs 40 rand to manufacture it, and it is 60% complete, and there are 200 work in progress, work in process units, the value of the whip will be as follows. You'll have the 200 units, I'd prefer this example so that you understand what it's equivalent units, which is what we've done here. You will take 200 units, you'll say I have 200 units, but only 60% of them are complete. So how much does it cost me total? It's 40 rand per cost per, per cost per unit. So it's 40 multiplied by 60 multiplied by 200, and it's 4.8. So what we're saying is that equivalent units is taking into account what the stage of completion. Am I making sense? Relative to the units that you would have produced. Are we all together? We take into what we're saying is that equivalent units, we account for the partially completed units. We call them equivalent units. So you're comparing them to what's been fully completed. You, you just think about it you are accounting for partially completed units. Are we all together? If someone asks you what is an equivalent unit, equivalent unit, you are partially, we are taking into account partially completed units and you are giving them a cost. Hence, you need to know the stages of completion. This 60% indicates that we are not 100% complete, but we are 60% complete. Therefore, for that period, I need to be able to show you this equivalent unit, to show you that, okay, fine, 60% of these are complete. Let me quantify it and give you a cost for it. That's what equivalent unit means. Let's look at the rules. I just want us to spend more time on what your module is saying because 
if you understand the rules and you understand the definition, you'll be able to apply it to your calculation. So raw materials, as stated previously for the purpose of this module, will be added at the beginning of the process. It's that flour, egg, milk. It's those coffee beans that are raw. They will be added at the beginning of the process. So in other words, materials will always be added at zero percent completion. Right? Because it's the input. We haven't applied anything on those raw materials. So if materials is added at the beginning of the process, any incomplete will still be 100% complete in terms of the cost of material as soon as they've entered the process. Thus, the percentage of completion when it comes to material cost will be at 100%, independent of how far the process of incompletion of units are. So what they're saying is that the input, when you put in your material, they'll be at 0% complete. However, we cannot deny the cost of that material to be deemed as 100%. Why? Because already it comes in at 100% complete. If you get what I mean, I'm saying the material itself, you can't say the raw material was 60%. The fact that when you're bringing in flour, it comes in 100% done. Am I making sense? But in terms of the process, it, 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 it starts at a 0% because we haven't done any work on it. But you wouldn't be saying that I'm going to deny the fact that the material came in at 100. Therefore, its cost will always be at 100% independent from what's happening in this process. Are uh, we together there? It's very important that you understand what I just said. Let's go to Get together. Yes, we are. I, I think so. I, I'm glad that you, we are. This flower came in as an as a hundred percent no work done. Yes, but the cost is at a hundred percent. But in terms of the process, it's at a zero because it just came in as an input. So whatever happens in terms of the conversions, we need to acknowledge that this came in at a 100% portion, I mean, like, um, state, at a 100% state. So whatever completion percentages are happening here, 60%, 50, 80, whatever, when you are counting uh, your work in process, your raw material, your material cost, always put it at a 100%. That's number one rule that you need to remember. Okay, that the equivalent unit situation, we, we see material at 100% when it comes to the cost. Let's look at labor and overhead conversion as to how do we view it in terms of process costing. As indicated above, I'm reading this so that you can see that it comes from your module, but you need to understand this and it must be embedded in your mind to say that uh with labor cost and overhead incurred evenly throughout the process we, we we need to now know how do we treat it some questions do not provi provide enough information to treat labor and overhead separately in general ledger labor and overheads will still be accounted for separately or cost per process so meaning for the process costing, normally we'll talk about conversion cost being labor and overhead. And we always say, the question always says that they are evenly uh, spent throughout the process, as if they are co-joined. Because think about it, when a person uses a machine to convert or to make a table or whatever, they are conjoined together in terms of process costing. But when it comes to accounting, the general ledger account, your T account, you need to see them separately to say there was the Valeng who was using a machine for three hours and she charges us 10 rand per hour. Therefore, 
it's 30 bucks. There's a machine that Dwelling was still using for three hours, but the depreciation or the rental of using this machine is this much. Accounting would split them, but then when it comes to process costing, you say it's conversion cost because they are intertwined, they work well together. All right, so they are evenly, they will always take place evenly throughout the process. Okay, so this will mean that if 30% of the conversion work on those tables has been done, the process will be 30% complete. Or if 65% of the work is done, process the process will be 65% complete. So we all together. That's where now, when it comes to labor and conversion, this whole completion uh, stage comes into play as opposed to the raw material. Because it's as and when. It's a thing of Ndwalen came in. I came in late. Fine. Ndwalen started from this time to this time and was working with this machine. Therefore, she couldn't meet the total um, time, but she was 80% in. It was 80% complete. You cannot denounce or ignore the fact that some work was done. You just need to know at what point or what was the percentage of completion. Because that's when you'll be able to apply that percentage to the cost. You don't want to overstate your cost per unit. That's why we're looking at the percentage. On the other hand, we know that the process is 20% complete. And then the conversion takes place evenly. We should also know that up to this point, a corresponding 20% of the conversion has been done and performed on the units involved. Therefore, these units should carry that cost per unit for the 20% portion. To repeat what we've been saying. Any questions on how the conversion and I mean the conversion cost work. This one is a hundred percent, but when it comes to labor and overheads, you need to know what is the percentage completeness. What is the stage of completeness? Sorry, what is the stage of completeness when it comes to labor and overheads? That's what you will allocate to the work and process unit. Okay, prior. Any questions? Sorry. I think we are all on the same page. Great. Prior process, how do we treat it? In order to start moving to the next process, a set of consequential processes would have been experienced. So this is instances where there was the Roasting, sorry for your leg. I'm using the coffee example. There was the roasting of the coffee beans before they started being grounded. So now the roasting of the coffee beans would be your prior process. This implies that uh, when a unit reaches the second process, which is in, in this instance would be the grounding part of those coffee beans. These beans should be 100% complete in terms of process one. But because there will be inputs for the grounding, there will be at a 0% completion for the grounding. Makes sense, right? So the roasting of those beans, by the end of the roasting, will have roasted coffee beans, which are at 100%. But once they come to the grounding of those coffee beans, they come in at a zero because they are input. Okay. Okay. Just something to be aware that prior process, they come out of their own process at 100, but once they come into process two, they come in at a zero as input. Let's look at an example. Maybe let's attempt it so that I can see that you guys understand. Let's try 
activity 15.1. So they're asking you to calculate equivalent units. Jumpy juice manufactures fruit juice in a simple, I mean, in a single process and makes use of process costs. The following information has been obtained for March 2020. You've got your opening whip, 70,000 units. Their conversion is 75% complete. Then they put new units that started and put into the production and it's 230,000 units. Then you have closing units whip of 50,000 and they also have a conversion percentage of 20% complete. Material is added at the beginning of the process and conversion is evenly, uh, is even throughout the process. So they're asking you calculate the equivalent units included in the opening web separately from material and conversion cost. And then they ask you to do the production work required to complete the opening inventory. They're asking you to calculate the units that have been completed and what is the equivalent unit in terms of closing work. Let me give you guys 15 minutes while we wait for the other people to come in. Let's, leave, yeah, let's do 15 minutes of this question to write attempted guys, whatever that you're thinking, write it down and then we look at the solution together. How's that? You all can see it the question clearly, right? Uh, yeah, so let's do 15 minutes so that by the time those other people um, would have understood exactly what we've been talking about. And we can also just go through the solution together. So I'm giving you guys 15 minutes. Just attempt it for me, please. Thanks. Can we look at the solution? Is that fine? Okay. Yes, yes, we can. Okay, awesome. Thanks. So with A, they asked you to calculate the opening units included in opening work. Opening work that we had, we had seventy thousand units, and then conversion was seventy-five uh, percent. So for the equivalent units for opening work. What needed to be done is to recognize that there's still material, right? And material is at 100%, as we've mentioned, and the units would be 70,000. But the conversion cost it is 75% complete. So you take 75% of those units to get the equivalent units. Are we all happy with that? Okay. Yes. Yes, we are. Awesome. Then the production work required to complete yeah. the opening whip, you had to see that it's the 25%. In terms of material, it will be zero because it's 100%. But in the conversion part, it's that 25% that you had to show that still needed work to be done. Then the units completed. You take into account your opening work. Sorry, sorry ma'am. Uh, can I can I just sort of jumping in your mouth? Yeah. <clears throat> just the question P, um, the production work required to complete the opening inventory. I so so this question is asking me what hasn't been produced or yes, the work that still needs to be done. Work that still needs to be done. Okay. Yeah. So what's incomplete? No. Then they asked you to do the production or the work that's still needed to be done. I'm not, no, sorry, the production. Where am I? 
Till it's completed, sorry. Then for that one, units completed and transferred to finished goods store. It's your opening with plus the units put into production minus the closing with. These are the units that are completed, completed and thus fully completed in terms of both material and conversion cost. So these are 100% done. Very important. Okay, when you're doing units complete, it needs to be 100% done for both material and conversion. Okay, then they ask you to do for the whip. What are the equivalent units for the whip? You show material 100 and the other one is 20%. Sorry, ma'am. Hi, ma'am. Yes. I just wanted to say to some of the students, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, if we're struggling with like maybe trying to understand the 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 units completed concept, I think we can align it with uh, accounting uh, processes where we have to determine the I think the purchases or the cost of goods sold. I think it's along along those lines because you have an opening inventory mm. uh, as purchases minus your closing stock. So if you can, uh, I don't know, I aligned it to that. So that that's how it made sense to me. It makes In sense. Of, yeah. It makes sense. It's a perfect example thing, see? It's a perfect one. Thank you. Yeah. So that's how you would see what is your units completed and transferred to the finished goods. Align it with excuse me, sorry. Align it with accounting principle. Okay. All good. These are very important to know, eh? And don't be like, oh, why is she spending so much time here? Uh, because as I've said, it's all about the build up. There's always a build up. That by the time we go to statements and there's losses, you should have known how to calculate these things. You must know what they mean. You must understand it, not cram, but understand. Because it always catches up. Okay, I'm just trying to see where we are. Okay, now we're going to look at how do you value this? Inventory valuation methods. Okay, so we know what weighted average method is. It's a pool of all, all the units created, and each unit is then valued at an average amount per unit. It's a pool of the it's everything. Then you get a weighted average in order to get the amount per unit. The first thing first out, excuse me then. First thing first out method, units may be different values depending on the production the oldest inventory is the one that is deemed to be completed first the one that's going to be sold first that's the first one and the weighted average we do recognize they all have different values but for us to get the cost per unit we pull we do a, an average so you'll take the total cost that by unit you are averaging you're weighting your thing it's a pool but when it comes to first in first out yes it's different values and the oldest one the first one that we're thinking that it would be so it's completed so how do we value incomplete units under the first in first out you split them between opening whip and those that started in the current period. Very important that you know. When it comes to those units that have been completed and transferred, you need to split them between what's in opening whip and those coming from the created average. All are treated as if they're coming from the unit. Very important that you know this. 
very sharp. So we know how this works. Now, yeah? valuation of incomplete, we'll see with the question. First is the start method, split between opening and the cost for the current period. But when it comes to weighted average, there's no split. Quantity statement. So with the quantity statement, I've explained it, that it's a summary that gives you a broader view of what is happening with your units. From the minute that they came in, from the minute they come out, what are the completion percentages you see? So it's, it's a detailed statement that gives you a broader view as to what happened in terms of your units. This, it's a checklist you put in all the quantities from physical to what you call equivalent units and to those that are under story line of your units. So here's just to explain what's in each box. So with the inputs under column one, that's where you'll find your opening whip that comes from the previous process and the units that are coming in to the current period. That's what you will find under physical in units, column one in terms of units. I mean, inputs. It's opening with and also units coming into the current period. Then, uh, column two, which is details. You will say opening web, it's the incomplete units, what, what, so you are just defining them. Put into the production, these are the units that entered into the, this process in this, this specific period. And completed transferred, uh, completed from the previous, um, from the opening and completed in the current. And um, these units that went through a full production process that can now be transferred into finished goods store, if applicable. Then losses, under column two details, you also put in losses, which will be discussed in week 16. And your closing web, it is the incomplete. So they're defining what each are under detail. And then once you come to output, this is where we indicate how many units are completed and how many are still in the process at the end of the pro period. Um, then there's equivalent units for material, then there's equivalent units for conversion. So this is a framework. So now let's look at the framework. This is very important. Let's look at the framework based on weighted average. How would it look like? And also under first in, first out. And then I'm just going to try and look at the rules that we have. But under weighted average, we've got the inputs, the details. You're showing inputs, opening work and what's been put into the production. Output is what's completed, and what is your closing with? You'll have your units, you'll have your raw material conversion, all right? First in, first out, opening with, put into production, but the output part, you have to show what's been completed from opening inventory and current production. And you have also your closing work. That's the difference. Know it, it's very important. Um, after understanding that, we need to now look at the rules. Yeah, let's look at the rules. Your time flies. Let's look at the rules now. Now you know how to, what is the framework, how is it treated? Know the framework because it comes by when you do the questions. So the study guide has certain rules. So I've just put certain screenshots of those rules. Is that when it comes to equivalent units, 
units completed from opening work. When you are using the first in first out, you have to split. Mention that you have to split between um, units coming from opening whip and those that were completed in this production and current period. Therefore, you need to separate the two. Okay, the percentages to use in order to calculate the equivalent units, it's the units completed from opening whip is determined by calculated how much work still had to be done in the current period to complete it. So you remember the question that the guy asked, the gentleman asked, he said that, oh, so is this the incomplete units? You remember that 25% that we saw? That's what you put here as part of your percentage. For units completed from thingy, you have to, from opening whip, you're showing how much work still has to be done on these opening units in the current period in order for them to be complete. So it's literally which work was not complete from the previous period that still that was incomplete in the previous period, but that was that is going to be completed within this period. So it's that 25%. Do you guys see? Very important. And the equivalent units for those that are completed within this period, how do you calculate it? It is, um, it's the balancing figure, okay? So when the first in first out inventory valuation is used, we will always have a balancing figure in our quantity statement for the number of units completed from the current production. These numbers are included at 100% because they are fully completed. For first in, first out, the number of units completed and transferred will thus be the subtotal of equivalent units from opening whip and the one with the that were completed in the current production. These units should always be included at 100% because they are fully completed. It's 100% material, 100% conversion. And then last rule, for the closing whip, the method does not influence the closing whip. So inventory valuation, whether it's first in, first out or waiting average, it does not influence how we value our closing whip. So you simply multiply the percentage of completion for this closing whip to the relevant number. So it's the percentage of completion at the end of the period. Let's go to the self-assessment. There's some stuff that you need to do. Let's do the example first so that everyone is on the same page. Then we do the question and then we're closing off. So let's do 15.2 as an example. Then you guys will do question and then we mark it together. Yeah. Um, Lunar lotion manufactures shimmering body lotion in a single process and they use process costing. Raw material is added at the beginning of the process and conversion takes place within you. Cost and production figures are as follows. You have the whip at the beginning, which is 5,000 and 40% complete with regards to conversion cost. New units put into the production for the month is 15,000. Units completed for the month is 18. And then the whip at the end, it is 2,000. 30% of it, it is complete with regards to conversion cost. So let's look, how do you do a quantity statement when you are using a weighted average method as your inventory creation. Inputs, they put 5,000 
as your opening whip. And then put into production, they put the 15. That's your input part. So your total input is 20,000. When it comes to the output, they did the 18,000 that was completed. And then the closing is the 2,000, because you were told. When it comes to equivalent units, what's happening is that raw material is 18,000 18, and the whip is at 2,000, so it's 20,000, that's 100%. But when it comes to completion, I mean conversion, 18,000 of this completed, it's at 100, yes, both material and both conversion, but they recognize that 80% of that closing, because remember, we said that your inventory valuation method doesn't affect your closing work. So you will show that percentage when it comes to the conversion cost. Any questions so far? Straightforward, right? Now, first thing first out, which will be interesting to see. With the first thing first out, your inputs, the opening whip it's given, it's that 5,000, and what's been put into production, the, it was given. So your total input, it is 20,000. When it comes to the output now, it's 5,000 as opposed to 8. So they're showing the 5,000, sorry for moving too quickly, and the 13. And you completed, it's 18,000. So how did they get to that? Let's go to number th eight, th 18 was given, right? But they split it between what was completed under opening and also current production. So let's see, what do they mean by that? So remember the, com the current production, they said that it will be a balancing figure under 5-0, The units completed and transferred to finished goods store were split between what was completed from opening inventory and what was and those that were completed under this production uh, period. So it's what was completed under that, and we have what was completed this, but the current production part is the balancing figure. But under weighted average, you guys saw all units were pulled in as it is, it's 18,000. They don't split it, they just pull it in. It, it's 18,000. Not treated differently. Let's look at the raw material. Then they recognize that for the opening whip, we don't recognize that raw material as raw material because it's just coming in 0%, but here comes something that's interesting. The conversion cost is 50%. Why? They told you that 40% was completed. So you've got 60 now here. That's 60% of the 5,000 that you need to show what still needs to be completed. Remember that rule? What still needs to be completed becomes part of your equivalent units. And then when it comes to current production, it's 100, 100. And then you're closing whip again. It's not affected by the valuation method. So you treat it accordingly. Material will be 100. And then conversion cost is 30%. Any questions? Do you guys see when the rules come into play? Is there any questions, people? I don't want to say guys, guys, people. 
think that it's for males. <laughs> but I hope the conversion, that, sorry, the conversion units under uh, completed work is sixteen thousand. Yeah, the part is not. Yeah, that's one. It's three thousand plus six plus thirty. Oh right, right. Because because you're adding the the opening yeah. and the current. Right, right, right. Because remember, you are splitting. When it comes to completed transferred, you split. You start splitting to opening and current. Okay. Let's do a question. Here it is. Tasteful Textile PTY Limited manufactures waterproof fabric in a single process and makes use of process costing. Material is added at the beginning and conversion takes place evenly. The following information is available. You've got the opening whip, conversion, units, new units, units completed in the current year. You've got the closing whip and you've got the conversion. Please prepare a, pr a quantity statement in accordance to first in, first out, and weighted average. 15 minutes. Please attempt it, and then you will now take me through what you guys have done. Yes, teacher. <laughs> so, 15 minutes, let's do this. minutes left um are you guys done or um how did you guys approach the first in first out method when it comes to process costing please take me through your thinking process any volunteers yep so first in first out you know, you look at the framework, you have a column of inputs, details, outputs, that's the physical portion, and then equivalent units, you'll have your raw material conversion cost. And also, um, the conversion cost units and percentages. Under inputs, you've got the 30,000 and the 500, right? Straightforward. Now, when it comes to the output portion, you have to show what was completed under the previous period, being the 30,000. And you know what your completed and transferred were, right? It was that for 90. And we know that the balancing figure is what was completed in the current production, right? Then closing whip is the 40,000. Are we all comfortable with the output portion? Okay. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes. So, yes. Can I just ask you? Just yes, you may. One. In terms of the details, right, under um, what you call this, the 500, the 500,000 for input, for, for, put into production. Um, in terms of details, do we have to put uh, put into production or, cause I had put uh, what you call this new units started. So I'm just wondering, is there like a right or wrong thing to say under that? Uh, uh, no, but I think just use the norm of put into production. Not to say you'll be penalized because it still means the same thing. Yeah. But just okay. for formality, just say put into production. Okay, shop. Yeah. Thanks. Um, then raw materials, you know that you only it will be a zero percent, but for current production we hundred percent. And you also show hundred percent for closing web. But the conversion portion is showing what's yet to be completed under opening inventory and um 
Also, current production it will be at 100% because it's fully completed, and closing work would be at 30%. Mm. Happiness. Yes. I'm, I'm glad that you guys understand it because that means that what's fully remaining would be the most person. Yes, John. You have a hand from, from Mavis. Yes, Mavis. Hello? Hi, Tabi. Yes, um, my concern is that the, though I, I joined a little bit later, right, regarding to the opening inventory, because at some, I've seen, I've done a few of the activities where with the opening inventory, the, the one for 30,000 where they sometimes deduct the, we only deduct if you are given that maybe a portion of that opening balance is, is being transferred or also because I just want to understand that one. Um, I don't understand the question. Please try say it again. I'm saying on the opening inventory, right? Yeah. From this question, I don't have a, a textbook. I was just using the screen that we had. It says 30, uh, 30 units, right? We, we mm. We've taken it as it is. So I was mm. doing this other previous question, right, where they said, I think they said 90% it's, it's take, it's, we should consider 90% on the input of the, of the opening inventory. So my question is, I, I don't have to assume, it must be a given information for me. It's not that always we'll have to less the certain percent that is given on the inventory, right? Yeah, but in what instance was the was the percentage deducted from the thirty thousand? If I may ask, was the normal losses included there, or what? What was going oh, on? Oh, now I understand. Yes, there were losses. I... Hence, I'm oh, saying okay. know this now. I say I always say know the basics. Then you will know when we introduce losses, where do we just change it? But oh, you know oh. the basics. Okay, thank you so much. It's well understood right now. Thank you so Pleasure. much. Pleasure. Yeah, so I'm I'm glad that you guys understand the basics. So that's the that's five four. But first in first out, apply the rules. The rules that we have is that when using first in first out method, valuation method, when it comes to completed units, we split in between opening inventory and current production and the current production is the balancing figure and we know that for that current production we say that raw material is 100 percent complete conversions will be 100 percent complete however for the opening inventory you're showing units that were fully completed in the previous period there is 30,000, but when it comes to the conversion you have to show what was incomplete from the previous period. That still needs to be worked on the current period. And we know that the valuation method doesn't affect the closing whip. Very important. Wait, yes? Sorry. Is that we easier? You see, what happens is that we normally get uh, confused. Uh, when we try to move from output units to equivalent units. So would it be better to complete your output units reconciliation first before you can expand your equivalent units? Yeah, uh, it, it, what works for you, right? Start writing the framework, write it down without the number. Then as you go, you can say input here, then you're like, ah, I know that I need to. Then the 500, only 500 done. Then, you know, current production, okay, I'm going to put it, I put it Then you say closing with this and this is the balance. Then you can go that way. Other people will say from opening, I do 30, I put 30 here, I know I need to treat this, and I'm done. Then you put put into production, they are done. Then completed, they put it here, balancing figure, they put for the 460, 460, they are done, they get their thumbs there, then they are remaining with frozen milk. So I'm saying that deal with it how it makes sense to you. Do you treat it per line item 
or do you do input, output, raw, conversion, or as you go? Whatever comes in, you put it there, then you deal with the rest. What makes sense to you, do that. But whatever that's making sense to you, make sure that it doesn't try to. Because remember, also, there's also a time pressure whereby they're now putting in normal losses, wara wara, like now you're working against time. Always start with the easy marks, I would say. Always start with the easy marks. Easy marks, easy marks are always, always the given. So I wouldn't say that's the correct way or the, but I'd say whatever makes sense to you. Uh, for me, as a person, I always put framework and I deal with things line by line. Then I know that I'm done. Other people would say, I want to do one, two, three, four. I always work with, at least I'll know that I'm done with it. But if I know that I'll have a question where I don't know if 40%, I'll do that and go to the next thing that I know that is easy to get, then I'll come back to something up. Understood. Thank you. So work with what works for you, but work with what works for you getting more marks. Not too much of your comfort zone. Because remember, exam is not about feelings, it's about tools. Time for war, put in the easy marks that you get marks. So you don't say, ah, I, I couldn't get to equivalent to you. You're, uh uh-uh. Not good. You must get to it. Rather say I didn't get to summing up. And even if you don't get to summing up, find a way to just see. Okay, for, now you must use maths. So it's around five eighty or something. Weighted average. Um, what's different? There's no split. Literally, that's it. There's no split. And if there's no split. You're just showing everything at a hundred. Closing inventory still not affected. You put it as is. Okay. How was the question for you? Straightforward or how is it for you guys? It's very straightforward. I think we all just need to take some time and just go through the theory. Because I think that's where most of us battle when you're trying to um, apply ourselves to do this as the, the, the assignment. Yeah. I think now, now that we've gone through the theory, the motions of how to calculate conversion costs, it makes a whole lot of sense. I don't know about other students, but for me, it makes a whole lot of sense now. Yeah. Uh, we'll do this question next time. When are we meeting again? On Wednesday. And we'll have to do this. Yeah, we'll have to do this one because it has normal losses and it's still the whole weighted average first in, first out. So meaning that next time when we meet, we are dealing with normal losses. I mean losses. Um, how long is it though? It's very quick, sorry. Yeah, I think we'll start with the losses. Yeah. And uh, it's quite long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was very quick. Yeah, so we'll do losses, and then the question that we're going to do, it's the exam, October exam, for 18 minutes. You see, the questions are always like 15, 18 minutes. Isn't that long? Um, yeah, so we'll do normal losses. Yeah, we'll do losses. Uh, next week. I'm just trying to see what else is there. It's just a lot. Eh? Okay, so yeah, process costing is quite long, as I did mention to you guys, but we are almost there. So it's always, we did, now we did the basics of what is it that we are trying to do, which is the cost of you. Then we got into looking at the definitions within process costing. Say, what is the completed unit? What is an equivalent unit? You know, we looked at those elements. What is the quantity? Then we said, what is the impact of using um, 
inventory valuation methods. We looked at FIFO, we looked at weighted average, and what is the impact when it comes to the quantity statement. Now, after understanding that and the rules, so those rules are very important, they make up the content. After understanding those rules, we did our examples and the questions. Next time when we meet on Wednesday, we are introducing losses. Normal loss, abnormal loss. How does it impact that um, quantity statement that we are looking at? Then we will look at the, because we still have to show how is it reported, you know? Um, so we look at how do you allocate, how do you make it into uh, an, an income or T accounts, what is the flow of accounts that it goes into? But what I'm saying is that we are almost there in terms of finishing product, uh, product process costing. Because what will be only be different next time that we speak is how we treat our normal loss and abnormal loss. How do we introduce it? And does it does the inventory valuation method have an impact on our losses? Being does our normal loss and um, normal loss change if it's under first in, first out or weighted average? But it's only those three elements that we're going to introduce next week. Then you would be done with process costing. Then we can look into standard costing, relevant, all those other ones that are big topics that just needs you to have the principles that you see. All right.